Yoshiro Shimmy Eber, a rare by David Katz. This is Parshish Pakudi. We'll start with the Torah, go into the Zohar, and onwards into the article. Questions, comments, or feedback, I can be reached at Rabbi Katz at virtualyeshiva.com. The Haftorah. We, if you've been following the classes, you've seen this theme basically since Matan Torah, Parshas Yisra. Last week I think I made a bit of a redundant comment about it. Solomon, his temple, the inauguration of the temple, it seems like we just can't get away from King Solomon. And it's, it's a very logical, rational reason. He built the first temple. The first temple is modeled after the wisdom of the Mishkan, the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, that is finally finished in our Parsha. And you say finally finished, what does that mean? If you've been following along, you probably, and we said the exact same thing last week. Why did we go from Jethro to Truma to Tetzava to Kisisa to Vaikahel and Pekude? How many, as a lot of Parshas, which seemingly are just over and over and over again. Go tell Betzalel to make the Mishkan. Hey, get this measurement next week. Hey, go tell Betzalel to make the Mishkan in this measurement. Hey, guess what? This week, in your week, go tell Betzalel to make the Mishkan. Like five times. If you, every year, if you don't just stop and go over it, you'll say to yourself every year, five times telling Betzalel to make the Mishkan? Five times? If you come through it, it's not five times. And now, because we're ending it right now in Parshas Bakude, again, for the last time, until so Vayikra, when we're going to go over the Korbanos a million times, and you're going to say, this Parsha sounds like that Parsha. They're not. Truma, the command to make a Mishkan. I don't know why. God said after Mishpatim, the statutes in Sinai, we are to make a Mishkan. Don't know why. To solve it. Well, if you're going to have a Mishkan, you should probably have Kohanim, priests, serving in their holy garments in the Mishkan. Kisisa. Ah, so the reason why is because they made a golden calf and the, and the atonement of that and the rectification of that is the Mishkan. Makes sense. Parshas Vaikel, okay, so go tell Bissal to do it now. Now that we're actually doing it in real time, do it! In our Parsha, Parshas Makude, so what did you do? Execution and brokering the deal, the command from God, what did you do? Checks and balances, what did you do in the end? Well, we made a Mishkan, we made an altar, we made the laver, we made a lot of things. In, in the end, we commanded it, we did it, we pulled it off. Moshe saw it, he was happy. Kulakavod. It's not the same every Parsha. What does look the same every Parsha is King Solomon seemingly every week inaugurating his temple. But again, it's dealing with the building, dealing with the inspiration, dealing with the command, dealing with the inauguration. And this week, he finishes the job, brings the Ark into the Holy of Holies, and he makes the blessing in the end. To paraphrase the Haftorah. Some key points. What was in the Ark? I know there's a, there's a lot of misconception and, and, and what is the status in there. It says explicitly, in the Ark were the commandments, the Ten Commandments on the second set of Lucas. That's all it says. The Ark is in there. Just a nice little tidbit. If you spell Aron, Ark, backwards, it spells Nora, which is awesome. This is very interesting. If you're, if you're going to describe the Ark in one word, is it not awesome? King Solomon makes a blessing. He uses the famous dictum, Baruch Hashem. And we're going to, we're going to close the article with those words. The famous Baruch Hashem, uttered by Noah, uttered by Jethro, one of the most famous, let's say, even non-Jewish sayings in the Torah, so to speak. Noah and Jethro, 
the, 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 the holiest gerim saying Baruch Hashem. And before I get into some of the key points, another uh, a very interesting language that King Solomon uses is the language to erect, right? Vayikam, to erect. This word uh, to erect in the temple is, is A, it's a Kohator signpost gear code word, right? It's in, in, in some usages, for example, here, it's 156, which is the Gematria Yosef. So, Dilnagon, in his Shulchan Aruch, the, the authority of the redemption, all the language of, of rising up, or to erect, is like a messianic concept. And I think it was last week's Parsha, with the erection of the Mishkan, the Balaturim commentary is brought, is, is brought to my attention by Jason. There, there was, there was uh, one of the students found the, the hint. Two people in the mer their merit of raising up the Mishkan, uh, it was dedicated in their in their in their honor or merit. King David and Yehonadab, son of Rachav, of the famous Rechabites. So again, very interesting when you get into the Rechabites, offspring from Jethro the Kenites. Uh, the Rechabites apparently this is a wild thing. This is verified in the Maral of Prague. The Rechabites went to China and have sustained the Ten Lost Tribes. I'm generally not into that stuff, but it just came about through research and discovery. We found it in the Maral in Netzach Yisrael. Um, that's what it says. Very interesting. And what comes out is the concept of a tent. Right? We know that the, the temple can only be built by a king, and the Talmud says that only the sons of Shem can, can and have built the temple with the Shechem. This comes from the, the prophecy and blessing of, of Noah, who says, But O Alei Shem, everyone shall dwell in the tents of Shem. That Shem is identified with a tent. And that is going to be the kernel of, like the fractal kernel of the Mishkan is it starts with a tent of meeting with Moses and it began as we're going to say with Shem through the blessing of Noah we'll get into how and it should be noted that the, the, the third temple will be an erection of Sukkot's David Nophelis the raising up of this fallen Sukkah of David and it was brought out by Chaim the third temple has one mention auspiciously of a tent in it between the, the, the entrance into the, the, how do you say the Hegel in English? The sanctuary, from the outside, there is a tent. And then that tent is really where you're stepping into another world of holiness. And that tent is the, the, the consciousness, or let's say the presence of Shem as the master builder. Now before we go further into the article... Into the, into the discussion of the Zohar, I want to say one thing. That the idea of the Mishkan being the wisdom of King Solomon and the Ark being placed there is the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant. Shem is identified with the, 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 the beginning roots of the Mishkan, the Temple, and the concept of Brit, covenant. The Zohar hints that in the time of the flood, Noah did not pray for the generation. And actually, the mercy that was evoked at that time was from Shem. And when God says that the merit is in my name, we know that Shem comes out of the flood as a koyen lakelo yom. He was a priest to God above, which is, he was a, he was a priest of God's names. He invoked God by name. Now, this is going to be a major element in the article. I saw it in Rev Ginsburg, in, his, in one of his books. The concept of Cohen, priest. But he says that Cohen comes from the language Hachana, 
to prepare. We know that there are four craftsmen of redemption. Meshach ben David, Meshach ben Yosef, Eliyahu, and the Kohen Sedek, who Rashi identifies as Shem, son of Noah. Kohen Sedek, with the language of Hachana, preparation, and Malchus, the kingdom of God, is depicted by the word Sedek, righteousness. Thus, the priest's job is preparing the kingdom. Koyin Sedek. Right? Koyin is a verb, a dynamic verb. I'm Koyin Ing, the level of Sedek Malchus kingdom. You hear that? I'm Koyin Ing God's kingdom. Koyin Sedek. Thus, underneath it all began with Shem and Abraham through Aaron. And eventually, in Psalms 110, we say by David, you will be a priest forever by my word, Malkit Sedek. And we know that Shem is, is Malkit Sedek, and there are three, at least three or four different versions of the craftsman's story, or I got it, in, in, in the uh, rabbinic writings. You can say, and it's not Mashiach and Yosef, it's the, the uh, one anointed for war. You can say it's not one, uh, another one, it's Mashiach ben Menashe is one of them. It's not Mashiach ben David, it's Melech Mashiach. It's not the Kayan Sedek, it's the Kayan Gadol. And there are different versions. And one of them has not Kohen Sedek, but Malkit Sedek, which we know is Shem. It's the idea of, in the earlier articles we said, Shem is koyin lekel oyon, a priest to God above. To God is a verb. Again, with improper English, you would say he's godding. Right? He's, he's working with God's names on high. He is godding God above. Let's say if I'm darshaning a pasuk below, I am going to be godding God's names above. Okay. Once you have this, this definition, then we can say, don't read, he is a, a priest serving uh, to evoke God's name above. Rather say, he's Kohen Lekel Yon, he is preparing Lekel, God's name above. Kohen Lekel Yon, the Beit HaMikdash, the third temple, is synonymous with this highest level called Keter, the crown the, the, the highest level of emanation in our world, or in any world. He is preparing that. He is Kohen Lekel Oyo. He is preparing that. And as Malkit Tzedek then, don't read Kohen Tzedek, don't read preparing Malchus. Read, he is Malkit Tzedek. He's making the king on the kingdom. Totally preparing the throne for the messianic Conclusion to creation, which we know began with Shem. The Yosef Karo actually says that Shem was 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 was, was the, the craftsman of the Ora Genuz, the hidden light of creation. From that hidden light of creation, Shem then sought after students, taught Torah, found Abraham passed the priesthood on, and eventually it went on to the, the, the forefathers, the tribes, Jacob, all the way through Egypt, the fashioning of the Jewish people, a kingdom of priests was, was aroused, erected, Aaron was the, was the priest, the high priest, then there's going to be a David, a King David, a King Solomon, and where do we find the midrash where Shem eats of the tree of life? And Solomon finds Shem, who lives forever at Mount Sinai, and says, Shem, is that you? Shem says, yeah. What happened in 2448? He says, the Torah was given. Shem's mission was complete. The son of David came with the Torah. Shem goes to Etzilus in his soul level to be that Malki Tzedek Lekelo Yon. He's buried actually in Sfat. And King Solomon then uh, deals with the remains, much like happened to Joseph and to Moses and to Joshua, 
all level of angelic men called Kruvim. When you hear of you know the, the forefathers being Chesed, Gevorah, and Teferis, all these levels, it's a type of level that when you beat your evil inclination and you wrestle the, the angels above, just like Abraham giving the food to the angels, Isaac dealing with the Akedah, the binding of Isaac, Jacob wrestling the angel literally. Every one of these, these super tzaddikim of the Torah has done this, and they have what's called a Kruv level of soul, represented by the Kruvim on top of the Ark of the Covenant. Okay. That's that for the introduction of the Haftorah. Now we have the Zohar. The Zohar was a lot of something, I guess you could say, right? It was a lot of something, and I don't know, they really didn't know what, it, what that something was. Until you realize, and, you, and you just by a shkacha practice, it was, it was, it was, it was Chaim and I were talking in our, in our Chavrusa, and we were talking about the Torah of Shem, where does it come from? And we, we found sourced, obviously. It's logical, but it is sourced. Sefer Yitzirah is given to Avraham, to Abraham. And the book of creation, Sefer Yitzirah, a, a, a classic work in Kabbalah, we all know, Abraham learns it from Shem. It's obvious. doesn't need to be sourced, per se, but it is. And there you have a pre-Sinai tradition from Shem. And when there's one other book that Shem had access to, that we know of, that still exists today, Sefer Raziel, and you rearrange the letters, it actually spells Arizal. As Loriana Kabbalah is, the, is the, the, the essence of a, a, a chewed up Zohar, a refined, sifted Zohar. And the Zohar here is really reflecting Sefer Raziel. The angelic shifts, and this and that, and this angel's name, and what do we do, and where do we go, what happens on Tuesday, what's going on in Jupiter. And I'm saying, why? I peeked into Sefer Raziel a little bit this week, just to see what's going on. Wow! That's what's going on over there. That was the inspiration they had. What people don't know about, everyone says, you should have this as a gula, but maybe not learn it. No, no reason, per se. It's just... Not learned. Just like the, the, the work of Kabbalah by Yosef Karo, Magi Mesharim. Just not learned a lot. When you look into it, it says something very interesting. Adam gives a prayer upon the sin afterwards. And they go into some exchanges. And there's a tradition from Adam to Enoch, Hanoch, to Noah. And by Noah it says he gave it to his son Shem. And after it was given to Shem, they understood the Ark on a whole new level. And in fact, it was strengthened by Shem, and the holiness goes after Shem. Shem then gave it over to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and onwards to, to I think, Levi, if he was one, Pinchas, and Pinchas' son of Yeshua. And from then it was son after son, the Brish Shalom of Pinchas was not to be a Kohen in this world. As you see, King David gave it to Pinchas to see what's called Ben Banav, not Ben Acher Ben. That Pinchas goes up a level to be a Navi Oilam, an eternal prophet, the pre Kohen Gadol above. And that tradition, son after son, is this tradition that began with St. Phraziel and eventually became the wisdom embedded in, the, in, the, in the Noah's Ark. And then it became invested in the Mishkan. Then it became invested in the Temple. Then it became Ezekiel's prophecy. The third Temple will be ushered in by, again, those four craftsmen on a level called the Kohen Gadol as the final Redeemer. He who prepares the Malchus, the kingdom, that the Goel Tzedek, the righteous Redeemer, will sit on. Very interesting. New perspectives of the four craftsmen. What makes the book Safe Erasial interesting is it's it's like you know, I tell a joke over the years about the Litfish Rabbi. 
It says something like, you know, just making every word in the world come to mind. You know, Rashi, Taisfis, we come to the Chertab Pshat, the Iker, the Maisa, the Chilu, the Iker, and then the Chertab Pshat, the Mahalach, the Galab, the 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 Dairah, the Raisa, the Dairah, the Kedoshis, and then the Mesech, the Chulin, and the Dairah, the Beis, the Aleph. Just random, everything you've ever heard of in Torah in one year. That's safe for Mazil. It's like we have Eliyahu, then you got Elisha, then you got the Shemayim, then you got Adam, then you got the Sin, then you got the Angel, and then Machoyo came, and then, and it's like, whoa, huh? The what? The who? And the huh? But and that's safe for Mazil. Everything's there. Just real tohu, real powerful, just boom, big thing, big thing, big thing. It's not interested in small talk. And that was the inspiration they had. You hear things like King Solomon say, Kavod Elohim Hester Davar. Right? The glory of God is a hidden matter. There it is, say for Azil. Every classic thing we've heard of, say for Azil. And that was around since day one. And that becomes the, in the inspiration of Shem. So then you say, well, the Torah of Shem, that's a nice concept, Rabbi. But where is it written down? I'd like to see a copy of this Torah of Shem. Assuming you're not content with Sefer Yitzira, and you realize, and the Midrash qualifies as such in the whole idea of Kohen Senek Shem, craftsman. Shem makes the arc dynamic. Already a different playing field. So imagine a dynamic craftsmanship. Right, you see live wallpaper on on iPads. That's a dynamic uh, craftsmanship and programming. Imagine that in physicality. And not a vote of and Tuma. Shem makes the boat a primordial temple. A primordial third temple. That level of the tent. And the inspiration comes from Sefer Rezeel. And that gave way of knowledge of Sefer Yitzhira. Harnessing creation, harnessing Shemayim, the angelic realm, to be in, 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 in working tandem with man. Solomon tried to do it in building the temple, and he got, he got in trouble. A lot of trouble. Demons and all kind of stuff. Noah, he succeeded, but he didn't do it with mercy. Shem did. And you'll never see it. Every year you learn it, it's called Parshish Noach. That's where Shem's Torah enters our Torah, where Moses puts it in our Torah. Where does Hasidus come from, says the Magid of Mezrich? Parshish Noach. And you read it and you say, okay, a bone, some measurements, blah, blah, blah. He is such an engineer and such a craftsman, you don't even see him there. In fact, that's what a craftsman should be. Right? You don't want sloppy craftsmanship. When you have like a, a speaker system in a car, the big thick wire cord, it's in the door panel, you'll never see it. Great engineering, you never see the kishkas. God is an engineer of the human body, right? You don't see our guts hanging out generally. When you get into, into the Parsha's Noah, if, you, if you're keen, you'll see all that inspiration. But we don't. So where is it? Enter the Zohar, which calls itself by name Noah's Ark. A Noah's Ark of the future. Why? It contains everything. Why is this week's Parsha all about safe for Israel? Because it's in there. Why is it about Atbash and Gematri and Hints and, and Gerim and Jews and making Gerim? And it's all in there. And name reads, and Bezalel's name means in the shadow of God, because that's what Torah is, names of God. If you get into Pardes, in Parshas Noyich, like a pro, you will see the inspiration of Shem. And by the time we properly meet the craftsman, now he's refined. He is Malki Tzedek, bringing that light of the crown into the kingdom, there's Abraham, receives the priesthood, we are on our way to bringing Mashiach. Okay? Now, into the article. That's a lot of 
Interesting talk. Now bring it into real time. Parshas Bakudi. All we know is Moshe, Moses finishes the Mishkan, and it's now called the Tent of Meeting. And it's interesting because the Tent of Meeting is the Gematria Yosef. Joseph. And when it's called Mishkan Oyo Moed, it becomes the Gematria Mashiach bin Yosef. And Mashiach bin Yosef in Akbash is the Gematria Cohen in it. Cohen with the nuns, the final nun. What's going on? By the way, the Kaf, the Hay, and the Nun in Akbach are the only letters not to have a mate. So they're singled out. How I many? It's like three or four, bam, parties matters right there. So already it's telling me this is one of those Kulator, Mashiach, Gematria moments. And it shouldn't be a surprise. When you get to Targum Yonas in the end of our Parsha, and very kind of quietly, Moses inaugurates the altar, the Mishkan, and the laver. Okay? Not a big deal. Only the Targum Yonas says, when, he, when we inaugurate the anointment, literally Mashiach, anointed, the Mishkan... That's alluding to the King Messiah. When we do the same to the altar, that's alluding to the Kohen Gadol we're talking about, Elijah. When we talk about the laver, that's talking about Messiah, son of Ephraim. All that from that? Yes. The Mishkan is a messianic moment. A four-craftsman moment. Because who does the, anoint, the, the anointing in the real deal? The missing piece, Kayan Sedek, Malki Sedek, Shem, son of Noah, as the Ramchal explains, he is the one that brings down that anointing wisdom onto the Redeemer in the world of Kruvim, a.k.a. and Silas. In a higher spiritual world. And that revelation is drawn down. That's what Shem does, he draws it down. Mashiach is the letter Shem Chai, bringing down that revelation. To where Pinchas Elijah, who is the Messiah, says the Arizal. What do we say by Elijah? That he is Chai. He is alive. And then we, 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 we use that expression that he is the mouth that will be an errand to the soul of Moses in what's called Nishmat Moshe, the soul of Moses, which is the composite of Mashiach. We're talking about totally messianic stuff here. Four craftsmen, all the Arizal stuff. Shem's what brings it into focus. Shem's what brings the light into that level of kingdom from above, which allows there to be that Messiah Eliyahu, which is so what allows there to be a King David Chai Vikayam. And again, if you're looking for a static point of view, you won't find it. It's not a David or a Moses or a Shem or an Elijah. It's all of them working together. And it's not, a, it's not an argument, it's not a contradiction, it's not a conflict. It's each one as a part and a job and a function in that Kruvim world above. And that's what the Torah of Moshe, Moses is about. The soul of Moses, which is synonymous with the tree of life in that world above. It says that when the, the jewelry was lost at Sinai, for the sin of the golden calf, Moses took the jewelry, again, Targum Yonason, and he put it in his tent of Talmud Torah Shalom, the tent of his Torah learning. He, and also, the Midrash states, all the extra malacha, creative work, that was brought by Garam, were used to make the study hall to the Mishkan, or where you go to study the Mishkan itself, which is Moses' tent. Moses' tent is called the Oomoed, the tent of meeting. It's that aspect of Joseph. And Joseph, according to Zohar, the name implies to, to gather. The souls gather there. Thus, Moses' tent, where you go to pray and learn, is where you learn how to be before the sin of the golden calf, i.e., that level without sin. 
that level of no death, i.e. the tree of life, as Shem ate from it and lived forever in that world above. But he, he is Chai Leolam, says the Midrash. We can all get there. Just like there were the Rechabites and the others that went into Garden of Eden alive. Or those that did not taste the taste of sin. Whether you physically die in a body is irrelevant. Shem exists and functions in Atsilas, along with Moses, along with the forefathers. Certain souls just live and function there. And we're all meant to function there. We're meant to bring that world of existence into our world. The Torah of Moses on this level called Nishma Moshe does that. That tent is synonymous with Shem's tent. In fact, Noah's blessing to Shem says, But Oale Shem, in the tents of Shem, rearrange the letters, it spells Moshe comes to me. Moshe Boali. And interesting enough, you spell the word Mishkan. If it's Mishkan, it's Ken Shem. Prepare to Shem. If you say the Mishkan, Prepared as Moshe. Prepared as Moses. The tent of meeting of Moses, he took the stuff, he went outside the camp. That's a classic gear. In fact, the Maral claims, why is Mashiach called a Mitzora? A skin malady? Because he's outside the camp. Just That's the definition of a gear. Someone outside the camp, says the Maral. So Moses sends his tent up. The garrison of women come to learn Torah and pray. They want to build a tent. They bring him all of their mirrors. Thus the copper laver was built by the mirrors of women. Moses didn't want it. He said, Ugh, I don't want this, this arrogance, this vanity in the, in the, in for the tent. God said, do it. Because by that right, Puravu lives. So women are hanging out in Moses' tent. And Moses, the most humble man in the world, doesn't look. But that's what, the, that's what the tent of meeting was made out of. And it stayed that way until ultimately when the Mishkan is, is sanctified, the Oloboe, the tent of meeting, becomes synonymous with the Mishkan. But Moses' tent lives. And the concept is, make for me a Mikdash. Make for me a temple. If you read the end of Parsha's Jethro, it's very clear. We weren't supposed to have a temple or a mishkan. We wouldn't have had a sin of the golden calf. They would remain Kruvim, angelic men. Each man would have been a chariot to the divine. And, and interestingly enough, again, where do we see this, this connection? Shem, son of Noah. Malkin said, servicing Zion. There was no physical building there. He was Malkin Sedek. Kalyan Sedek. He was making the kingdom of Malchus, of the kingdom. Meaning he was putting the king and the kingdom together. All we know is we're here in the Mishkan. And the purpose of this article is just focus on where we are now. And you'll see the story continues. Solomon's temple. And the second temple, the third temple, Jews and Gerim working and learning about the gear code in the temple itself. I.e. Zohar code, Shem's code, the ark. Oh, you want to go back to the ark? Adam sin. Noah and Shem in the ark building the Tower of Babylon. All the way from Shem's tent into Sinai, Moses' tent. The story is one long journey of tents. Our craftsmen, our building, our progression, we're going somewhere. The whole Torah is, is in a sense about progressive behavior in craftsmanship. You can say Adam didn't build a house in the Garden of Eden. So they wanted to build the Tower of Babylon. Shem and Noah did build the boat, the primordial temple. Then there are tents, and then Jacob dwells in the tents. And Noah says the tents of Shem. Noah gets a tent first, then God builds the Mishkan. This is the ongoing theme of Torah.
And as I'm writing the article, I'm realizing, you know, I, somebody put a joke on Facebook about the number pi. And, I, and when we were discussing it, everything you say about pi can be used, like mathematical terms can be used for uh, discussion. Well, I guess, you know, I guess there are, they, they, have, they have to work out their differences. Uh, mathematical usage, right? Uh, figure it out. Mathematical. You know, that doesn't equate. Mathematical. You know, Freud has stuff like this, right? And I, as I'm writing this, I realize that construction terminology is very apropos for discussion. Right? As I wrote this, I'm saying things like, uh, I'll use constructive words and uh, being the model. And I wasn't trying to be funny. It just comes out that way. So what are the constructive elements in our story? Let's go ahead and read some. These are all the dots we have to know. Moses, Shem, the Mishkan, Garen bringing product, Ger women in the labor, house of study, the concept of being a vessel, the chariot to the divine, Moses' tent, the tent of meeting, tents of shame, Noah's blessing, golden calf, lost jewelry, Messiah and the Mishkan, Torah and prayer, Noah and his ark, ark and Shem, for craftsmen of redemption, the book of Raziel given to Adam, the Arizal, Solomon, temple, prophet Ezekiel and his temple, learning about the temple as a way form of building it. Zohar as a Noah's Ark, the Gear Code, Torah of Faith, i.e. Rebbe Nachman's Cassidus, Angelic Attainment as Man, the Primordial Temple or Dwelling. How's that for a story? That about covers all of time. All of time. And then you say, how can I do it? How can I do anything with that? Noah's Ark puts them in pairs. And all of a sudden, if we pair things up, Shem and Moses, tents and tents, same for Yitzhira, same for Raziel, Solomon's temple, the third temple, corresponding with the Mishkan, start consolidating the program. And you come out with a prat clava prat. Right? In Talmud of Dictum, this is the single thing, the big thing you learn from it, which funnels down into a single thing. Moses' tent. That's it. The tenth of meaning that says, Psh, wow, everything is here. Once you get in Moses' tent, really is the whole story. Focus it back down and say, ah, you mean the tenth of Shem? That's just the tenth of Shem. And the end result is the tenth of Shem is synonymous with the tenth of Moses. Once you understand ten Shem, you can understand Moses' tent. Understand Moses' tent, you understand God's tent. The third temple. The storyline is actually very simple and parallel. Let's go ahead and say the story. There's a guy named Adam, and he sins. He's given a book, Book of Raziel. It's an inspirational book, contains all the hardware of Torah. That book was studied. And it was made into an art form by Enoch, I, a.k.a. Hanoch, who became an angelic man, a Kruvim called Matat. He is God, takes him out of the world. He becomes the essence of the master of the kingdom above. And that knowledge comes to earth, and it verifies it for Raziel. It becomes a main component of what becomes our book of Zohar. We get a guy named Noah, commanded to build an ark. Noah read about the kingdom, educates Shem. Shem makes it super dynamic and divine and metaphysical and whatever it does, it comes out of the flood, the covenant's in his name. He gives the Torah it's, it, to, to Abraham after 400 years and you get an Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Noah blesses Shem, the God of Shem, Baruch Hashem, the Oval Hashem, Tents of Shem. Way to go, Shem. Shem is mocking. Sedek meets up with Abraham, passes on the, the, the priesthood and the entire Torah. Fast forward into the time of Sinai, you have Moses and Aaron. The priesthood is there. The kingdom of priesthood is there. The Torah is given. Golden calf episode comes way back when we had a, an intermediate stage of the building of the Tower of Babylon. And you're either now for Babylon or God's temple. Moses' tent is established, a tent of study, a.k.a. the Tree of Life or the secrets of the Mishkan that Solomon blows up into the messianic wisdom. Bring in 
the lineage to Solomon, you now turn the kingdom of priests into a kingdom of David and Solomon, the fulfillment of Shem's hidden light of creation. Solomon and Shem meet. Shem is released from this world. Solomon is entrenched. The Messiah is born, so to speak. The temple is destroyed. Another temple comes. 2,000 years of exile. Jews and Garam coming together at the end of days. Garam being the shards of the wisdom of the Torah of the Ark of Noah. Jews being the remnant of the tent of Moses colliding together, making Garam in the end of days, studying the Mishkan, the Zohar, all these things together so that we bring the universal Shabbos to creation through the revelation of the third temple, amen, can hear its own. That's life as we know it. And the whole Torah tradition is really in that in that Kav, that line. It's about the craftsmanship, the temple, not the Tower of Babylon. Returning to that pre-sign, that pre-sin of the golden calf state, the Kruven level, elevating our Torah, the Torah of Moshe, into the soul of Moses, finding that Shem in Parshas Noah to allow us to get to the Zohar consciousness, to plug back into the Torah, to expand Moses' tent till it becomes that resurrected temple. What are the four craftsmen supposed to do? Mashiach and David and Yosef build the third temple. And what do we see in the Zohar? Moses and the two messiahs. Moses' tent is the study hall. The study hall is a tent. It becomes, whatever it becomes, it becomes the Torah, it becomes the garden, it becomes the pardes, the orchard, the mystical dimension. Ezekiel's prophecy is how to build the third temple. We spoke about the Ger Code. Finding the Ger in the language and the measurements, and there's the Ger Code with the Ger Tzedek and the Ger Tzedek woman, now what we're really saying is, don't, don't, don't just go to Ezekiel's temple or Solomon's temple or even the Mishkan. Go to the source. Say for Raziel, say for Yetzirah, the Zohar, or your boring old Parshish Noah. The original inspiration, the Torah of Tohu, the first 2,000 years of creation, where Shem was at his, 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 his highest. That's where the Jew and the Ger together, in this time period, after 2,000 years of Torah, 2,000 years of Messiah, we're coming at the end of the time, the Torah has been written down, the Zohar is well in our midst today, the, the Torah called the Noah's Ark of our time. It's none other than the pass key that opens up ancient wisdom. And you're really going no further than just Parshas Noah. When you skipped over saying Noah's okay and Shem is just Noah's kid, now it resonates a little different. As Rashi says to Ezekiel, learning the dimensions of the temple is the way to build it. So too for Ezekiel, so too for the Mishkan that has the tent of study, so too for Shem's tent and the wisdom invested in the ark from the initial inspiration that goes back to Adam himself. The Zohar, for whatever reason, has these tools in it. Is the Zohar the book everyone has to learn? Not really. Am I saying you have to learn Zohar? Not really. If you're interested in Shem, Shem's wisdom, the Mishkan, Third Temple, Gerim, the Zohar is your book. If you're in the tent, Fachim, of your menorah on the countertop, and, and Lulavs that are kosher, and Halachala Misa, and I don't want to do anything with Garam, keep me as Jewish as possible, it's your call. You don't have to. If I'm a non Jew, I'm a Noahide, Pushit Noahide, not into Garism, Gear this, Gear that, I like seven laws, do I have floors art? No. Do you want to understand Shem and Moses' tent? and the crowns of creation, all these things that we see in the Chumash, we say, what is that? I don't know, keep going. 
Well, Targum Nose talks about the, the, the anointing and the Mishka and so what? Well, if you care so what, the Zohar might be the book that you want to read. That's all. If you care about the four craftsmen and what a craft is and why there's a third temple and what the book of Ezekiel is about, that's what this class is about. That's what these partials of the Mishkan are about. Do I spend my time reading about the, the, the Sota and the Nazir? No, not so much. What's interesting is, if there was a, a community of Nazarites, how awesome would that be to take Nazarite Torah and teach the Nazarites? In our time today, we have Gerim erecting all over the world, and we're saying, look at this. There's a tradition of Gerim out there. It goes back to Shem, the early inspiration, the Mishkan, and every time this year, we just say, look at the watch and say, eh, Truma, Tesave, I don't know, it's not so interesting. It's just five parshas in a row talking about a, a Mishkan. The Garam bring it to life. The Garam are the, 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 the shards of that Ark of Noah. What the Gerim are perfected, per, 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 have perfected is the art of Malacha. That creative labor they brought more than enough that made the Mishkan and the tent of study. The Gerim and his craft has the ability to conquer the world. To pave it over. His natural state is Yaniach, like Noah, to rest. So he's naturally resting his his benefit to himself, the world creation, is to go out there and do. And by doing, he connects with the divine. By doing, go anywhere, do anything, conquer the, the wisdoms of the world, the old school wisdoms. The real things that work, real light in this world, physical activity, the, the, the mentality that comes in, sports, exertion. The Gerim are masters of it. By doing it, they work things out. The Jew is the opposite nature. He's, he's, he's the exact opposite. If the Gerim is resting, the Jew is working, and vice versa. Six days you will work, seventh day you rest. The Gerim learns to take his gift of Shabbos. And the Gerim teaches the Jew how to take a gift of how to work in the world during the week. A perfect partnership. Perfect partnership. The words of Noah. The words of Noah are to bless Shem. Just as the Zohar is called a Noah's Ark of our time, the Midrash Rabbah's words open up and say, Torah is meant to be a tool, a craftsman tool, Kli Amunah. Faith Amunah is the same word as craft, craftsman. Noah's blessing to Shem is Baruch Hashem for the God of Shem. May Japheth and the world dwell in the tents of Shem. As we mentioned, the tense of Shem, same letters, Moshe comes to me. We know that Moses, Shem, and Noah are one common soul. Initial letters spell Shemin, the oil. It's that oil that is the anointment of the King Messiah, Elijah Cohen, God, Mashiach, Ben Ephraim. As spoken by Targum Yonason, and in the words of the Ramchal, about Malkit Tzedek. He was a Kohen Lekel Oyon. His wisdom is the anointment of the Messiah. As we talk about Rabbi Ginsburg, it says the Kohen Tzedek, the preparation of the kingdom, the Malkit Tzedek, bringing the king to the kingdom, the priesthood is that level of Mashiach ben Yosef. That level of the throne that David sits on. 
And we have a Talmudic tradition. King David is the one when all the tzaddikim sit together. King David comes and says, I will rightfully bless. The right is mine. Psalms 110 says, David, you are, for that reason, I taught Kohen Leolam, I'll debarti Malki Tzedek. You are a priest forever by my word, Malki Tzedek. And by that right, we understand exactly why in the whole Mishkan, tent of meeting, Moses, the soul of Moses, Shem, the tent of Shem, the basis of the third temple, the Targum Yonason ends very simply. Very simply. We have three anointed with the Mishkan, the altar, and the laver. Melech, Mashiach, Elijah, and Mashiach ben Ephraim. And only one was missing. There's only three. Shem, Malki, and Sedek is the one doing the anointing. It's what Moses is drawing down. Moshe and the two messiahs. You see the image. Moses anoints. The inspiration came from above. Right? Shem is the higher level in the soul of Moses. And out of this Mishkan, we will have the Messiah program, the, the four craftsmen of redemption. We have the, the craftsmen of redemption for really only one task. It wasn't the Tower of Babylon. It wasn't the Mishkan. It wasn't the Ark. It's the Third Temple. And we have a tradition, as I've said, the third temple, any temple, has two prerequisites. Only a king can build it. And to have the Shekhinah inside means it comes from the sons of Shem. May Jews and Gerim be Zochah to work together to bring the third temple into Revelation. Thank you.